Hi, welcome to lesson 9 of week 1 of Julia Programming for Nervous Beginners, where we discuss functions. It's our very first lesson on functions, and we're, there will have to be several more. So functions in Julia is actually a very big subject, one of the very biggest. So we'll, in keeping with our philosophy, uh, our slogans, we'll take a very small step into functions. In fact, we'll discuss only two of the built-in functions. But we will have to consider what it means to put multiple inputs into functions, what keywords are and what defaults are. So those are all things you need to know about the moment you start using Julia's built-in functions, and so we really think that we should introduce those right at the start. Um, we will also start on the topic of inputs that differ by type. The type is a technical term that we will use uh, more often in this course, but we postpone a detailed discussion until later. We'll also introduce you to the question mark way of asking a, a question from Julia's help system at the REPL, and you should plan to use the system early and often. It's really a, it's a wonderful thing. It's a very important resource to have at your fingertips. So our aim is uh, to learn to use the function string and join, to understand the difference that multiple inputs will make to join, and to understand the difference that keywords make to string and the role of the default values of keywords. So, uh, after the lesson, you should be able to use string to combine several values into one string, and you should be able to con use string to convert an integer into a string. You could even, in that case, specify a base to use for the conversion. You should also be, uh, learn to use join to make a single string from a one-dimensional array of strings, and you can optionally specify the separators. So here's string as a method for combining values into a single string. We start up Julia, and um, I want to combine values. So let's first just do that explicitly. I'll have the values A, uh, the values 7, the value plus, uh, the value are my suggestions. Let's see what happens. And it just takes them all together and puts them in a string. It doesn't worry about whether this is an operator or not, whether this is a number or not. It just says, can I turn this into a bit of string? Yes. Can I turn this into a bit? Yes. Can I? It just turns them all into bits of strings and does them. Um, I can give this a value if I like. I can say str equals, and then at the end of this, I can say print str. So I'm not using println, I'm just using print. And the difference is that um, there is no blank line before the Julia prompt. Uh, I think I don't really like that very much, so I'll go back to using println like that. So uh, we've got strings, numbers, we can even include variables. So um, I can just put SDR there in itself. So I've got I've created SDR before here, yeah, right? So this is a value that Julia now has. And so when I put this value here, Julia knows what that value is. It uses the value from before, um, but it actually does it int. And if I repeat this, it gets even longer. It'll get even longer each time as I do this, because I'm using the previous output value as part of the input, and I get a new output because I've lengthened this value of SDR by these. And so they get longer and longer as I go along. Okay, so, um, okay, so if we want to use string with just an, in, uh, an integer value, then we can get some optional information. Let's just see string with an integer value. So we say string, and we say one, two, three. And 
it just turns it into the string, one, two, three. So that we've already seen before, but it can do other things. And uh, let us use the help system. So you enter the, this at the, you don't even have to enter it. You just, the moment you type it, it comes up. And we want to help help on the string, and it gives us this. So here we say, it, now it immediately gives us back to the Julia prompt. So it says, string, if the input is an integer, then, and the base is equal to 10 and pad is equal to 1, then we convert an integer n into a string in the given base, optionally specifying a number of digits to pad to here, is if we have the number 5 to base 13, we pad 4. So this is 5 times 13 to the 0, and then two more zeros because we pad it at 4. And if we want 13 to base 5, then it's 3. And we pad it out, at, uh, so it's 3 times 5 to the 0, plus 2 times 5 to the 1, plus 0 times 5 to the 2, plus 0 times 5 to the 3, and because we pad it out to 4. And here is to create a string from any values using the print function. We've already seen that, so that doesn't, this lot, that doesn't tell us anything new. Um, Okay, so um, string does different things. So let's just use it. Say string, um, and let's say we have 25 comma base equals 5, pad equals, say, 7. So uh, we expect to see quite a few zeros, then we want uh, 25, which is 5 to the 2. We don't have 5 to the 1, we don't have 5 to the 0. And so we expect that's exactly what we see. That's 0 times 5 to the 0, 0 times 5 to the 1, 1 times 5 to the 2, 0 times 5 to the 3, etc. Um, if, we, uh, if we try to specify pad equals 0, um, it's the same as specifying pad equals 1. So, um, but we can't specify base equals 1, of course. And uh, we also can't specify negative numbers and so on. So, um, it turns out, of course, as we know, that we can leave some of it out. So, if we just say base equals 2, then that is the binary version. So it's 2 to the 0 times 1, 2 to the 1 times 0, 2 to the 2 times 0, 2 to the 3 times 1, and 2 to the 4 times 1, 16 plus 8 plus 1. Um, so um, it doesn't pad it at all, but let's say instead I say pad equals 7. Then it pads it, but it uses base 10. So we can choose either pad or base to, to specify, and we can leave the other one out. So let's go on to the function join. So this is a method of combining several strings. So if I say my string array is equal to the string A, the string B, the string C, 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 and the string D, 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 um, now note that I have put it around square brackets. Comprehension, of course, as we know, also puts it inside square brackets. So these two are very similar. They're very similar to comprehension. So this creates uh, an array for us, and all of them are strings. So it is indeed a string. So we can just say join SDR array, and it just makes the whole thing into an array with nothing else. But let's look at what 
the help tells us about join. So, join has uh, the possibility, it, now here's the use of square brackets, to read um, a message that you get in, in Julia's, um, at the help prompt. Uh, you should know that when it does something in blue, uh, it tells you this. This is the different possible syntax. So this is a way of summarizing several different kinds of syntax. It tells you that this is optional, and you don't have to have it. And it tells you that this is optional. You don't have to have it. So you can just have strings and a delimiter. In fact, it will turn out that the delimiter itself is also optional. So, um, Let's just see um, what it says. Join an array of strings into a single string, inserting the given delimiter here between the adjacent strings. If last is also given, it will be used instead of delim in the, between the last two strings. And if IO is written, it is written to there. So this is where it goes to rather than being returned as a string. And so then they give this example. There is an array here. This is our array. It gives comma space for delim, and it gives space and space for last, and then it gives us that. Um, and so um, I can give, say, the delimiter one and the delimiter Two. Now, these are not strings, so I actually expect it will be an error, but it isn't. It actually turns one and two into strings. So even if these items are not strings, it doesn't work. But let's see what happens if we create uh, an item which is not a string. Now, it's no longer an array of type strings. It's an array of type any. And if we try and do that, it still uses the seven and it turns it into a string. So uh, join will also try and turn whatever you give it into strings if it can, but um, you shouldn't count on it. You should actually try and make sure that it is always a string. So the point here is that um, if I leave one of these out, um, so I, maybe I just make some blank space, then it just does that. And it just uses that as a delimiter. So it doesn't, um, if I wanted to somehow have nothing except the final one, what I have to do is say, okay, that's my final space. So I can do that. I can try and just put nothing there and see if that works. It says, no, it doesn't. So, but what I can do is I can put the empty string there and then I get what I want. So what has happened between the difference between join and string? So um, if we want join to behave differently from the first time we used it, if we just give it one argument of string values in an array, then it just puts them all together into one string with no spaces or anything in between them. So join the behaves differently depending on the pattern of the inputs. On the other hand, string changes its behavior when we include at least one of the keywords, base or pad. If we try and use string on uh, an integer and um, we just say seven and two, then um, it actually doesn't do that, that item. We need to do something like saying base equals seven, and that is an error unless we say pad equals two. So we have to measure, we have to actually mention the keywords in the case of string. So, in both cases, the behavior you get depends on the pattern that you supply, but they depend in different ways. In, in, uh, in join, um, we haven't got a choice as to 
which of the values we change, and that we can do for string because we can use the keywords base or pad. Um, and uh, on the other hand, in join, we can give uh, different kinds of different numbers of inputs and still get joining behavior whereas in string uh, if we want anything other than the combining behavior of string that is if we want to uh, format a number in a number of ways then we have to use those keywords. So what we'll see again and again is that most functions in Julia have many methods so that makes them generic and which method you get depends on the pattern of inputs you give. Let's just look at the function methods. If we apply the function methods to a function we already have, we know about, then it gives us very, very compactly that there are six methods. And you see that the pattern of inputs, all of these first three have an input for, uh, of type IO at the start and um, then they differ in the number of inputs there. Otherwise, these ones just have a, a, an array of strings at the start, and then they may have a delimiter, or they may have a delimiter and a last. Right, so let's re review that. Um, the function string, when acts on many inputs of all kinds separated by comments, concatenates them all into a single string. The function string, when it operates on a single integer and the keywords base and pad are used, will format them into other than decimal numbers. And the function join, if it's given an array of strings, it will concatenate it into a single string. And join has alternate methods which allow delimiters to be inserted between the, the strings. And that can be, um, you can have the the last of the delimiters between the last two strings uh, can be different from the delimiters that separate the other strings. That's the end of lesson nine. That's the end of week one. You've got a number of assignments and, and exercises that you have to do this week. So please make sure that you get all of them done before going on to week two. Bye.